Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. They're back. New video shows reckless drivers pulling donuts and burnouts, this time right in front of police. Thanks, everybody, for being with us here at 6. I'm Karen Drew, in for Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skilly. It is a problem that always gets worse when we see the weather warm up. So-called street drifters staging these reckless stunts right in the middle of intersections. Not just dangerous for spectators, of course. It's also very annoying for neighbors who are just trying to sleep. Victor Williams reports from the intersection of Seven Mile and Greenfield in Detroit. With the warmer weather comes a lot of drivers revving up the engines, getting ready to take over the intersections to do donuts. And if you don't think it's a part of a bigger problem, then really you're not seeing the bigger picture here. Two or three in the morning, you know what I'm saying? Wake people up, burning rubber. Marvin here is one of the people clearly frustrated with street drifters doing donuts at the intersection near his home at Oakman and Livernois. It's, it's real bad, you know what I'm saying? They be standing in the middle of the way and they be doing them donuts. They block off the streets. And he's not the only one after this video obtained by Metro Detroit News went viral, showing multiple cars shutting down the intersection just five miles away near Seven Mile in Greenfield, all in front of the police. This is a new sense for everyday working people who go out here in the city of Detroit and work hard. DPD once again speaking on the matter, saying obviously it's going to happen, but it's very dangerous. We've done multiple stories ourselves about people being injured or even dying because of the stunts. It's a danger to the community um, because of the nature of the drag racing um, with vehicles possibly losing control. But what happened to DPD's so-called Drifting and Drag Racing Task Force? Well, it's still in place, and they plan on cracking down even harder. We are out here, we are vigilant, and we are looking for drag racing, and we are enforcing all uh, criminal laws. It's a problem surprise, ain't nobody got hurt yet. But as we just reported, it has actually happened already. That's the reason why DPD is cracking down on all of this. But remember that they've confiscated vehicles in the past for less. This incident, however, remains under investigation. Victor Williams. Well, it seems to go on and on. Yep. All right, Victor. This afternoon, parents of the four teens killed in the Oxford school shooting are calling for a full investigation into the shooting by the state attorney general. They tell us today it's not about blame. It is about forcing change they believe has not happened at all. Sean Lay live for us this evening and Sean, the convictions of the shooters parents do not mark the end of this. Absolutely, Karen. Good to see you. Good evening, everyone. Also, questions have not been answered. We know there's a guidepost solution investigation that has been completed, but questions like why an emergency operation plan at the school was in place but not fully implemented or followed. The third party investigation that was done so far, um, they only concentrate on the event. So small pieces leading up to the event, but um, the overall picture was it was never drawn clearly enough. Craig Schilling and the parents of the Oxford school shooting victims in the wake of the tragedy when their kids were taken from them say not nearly enough has happened to change threat assessments of at risk kids in school. No school officials involved in that awful day have been held accountable under the law of governmental immunity. It's taking civil suits from the parents against school officials and now the state Supreme Court and federal court of appeals to decide if governmental immunity is unconstitutional. If a school system wants to do their best, they're never going to do it because if they do something wrong, they're going to be able to hide behind governmental immunity. If you don't have that and you set that bar, then everybody is going to try to do a better job and actually protect our children or, you know, give these threat assessment policies or actually listen to them. The trials of James and Jennifer Crumley putting a spotlight on that meeting the morning of the shooting and the assessments made by a counselor and Oxford High School Dean of Students. You know he's got access to a gun. You've got his death, his murder plan right here in front of you. You can't recognize that he's at the top of the mountain in crisis. And they don't have to answer to that. So far, no, until we hear from the state Supreme Court or that federal appeals court, sixth court of appeals down in Cincinnati. 
that's something to pay close attention to. Also, guys, the, the, the parents are saying that you can't have change unless you have all the answers to start with. For Live Tonight, Sean Lake, Local 4. That's so you. right. All right, Sean. Population decline, not a new problem for the state of Michigan, but the numbers keep getting worse, especially for Metro Detroit. The U.S. Census Bureau puts Wayne County in the top 10 among American counties for the largest population decline in 2023. Business editor Rob Maloney live tonight with a look at the numbers and uh, what it all means for our future, Rob. Well, Devin, if you come here to a U-Haul location, you'll find a lot of people looking to move in or move out, mostly moving out. And here's what we found over the last three years. The census says that 42,745 people have left the county. It's a real problem when you're talking economics. We met skilled trades union bricklayer Jason Wheeler and his girlfriend, Christina Aloisio, at the Detroit U-Haul Center today. They're prepping for a move to Washtenaw County. It's hard to get work close in the inner city. You, you, you'll find work in uh, Lansing or north of here. When you've been a leader. We learned the hard way when Amazon looked away from Detroit for its second headquarters project a few years ago. Too many of our kids graduating from top flight universities and then leave with their degrees. And of course, there's that limited mass transit. Lou Glazer runs Michigan Future, a think tank researching all of these issues. Compared to the country, we have too many old people and not enough uh, work, younger working age adults, which is not good for the economy. And the census gives us historic perspective. In 2010, Wayne County had just over 1.8 million people. A dozen years later, it's down 3%. The estimated numbers show steady declines of 1% or more since 2020. That's a stark contrast from Harris County, Texas, the Houston area, which is seeing 1% a year growth. Home values go down, so there's an immediate impact in Wayne County. But for the whole region and the whole state, the impact is on the economy. Employers can't grow, particularly high wage employers can't grow. I'm done with Wayne County. Now, Harris County, Texas is the number one for growth in the nation when it comes to the population shifting and moving in their direction. But to be fair, here in Wayne County, we did find people who were moving in. I found a guy from Cleveland today, moving from Cleveland here to Wayne County. We also found a guy who was looking to go from Livonia to the city of Detroit. So there is shifting. The problem is, is that we need it to go in the other direction in a on a grand scale. Yeah. And so far, it doesn't look like that's going to be happening. Exactly. Reporting live in Detroit, Rod Maloney, Devin Beck. Need to bring it to mass. Exactly right. All right, Rod. Wayne State University officially welcomed its new president today. Kimberly Andrews Espy is the 13th president in the school's history and the first woman to hold that title. She was elected in the summer and has already been working as president for several months, but her formal appointment came this afternoon in a ceremony at the DIA. She laid out her vision of what the school is and what it can be. Wayne State is truly a special place, a dynamic force for Detroit and beyond, a nexus of learning and research, of access and community engagement that differentiates us in the higher education landscape. Andrews Espy replaces M. Roy Wilson, who stepped down as president after holding the role since 2013. United Airlines CEO is unveiling a new plan aimed at bolstering customers' confidence when flying. This month alone, there have been at least six incidents that have occurred mid-flight, and now the airline is trying to allay passenger fears by reaching out to them directly. It has been a challenging month for United Airlines with a number of flight mishaps making headlines, compounded by the fact that United is Boeing's biggest customer in the U.S. and Boeing is under federal investigation following a string of quality control lapses and in-flight incidents in recent months. Now, United CEO Scott Kirby is stressing the importance of safety to customers in a new letter sent out Monday. United's most recent event happened just Friday in Medford, Oregon. One of their Boeing 737-800s landed and was found to have a missing panel under a wing, forcing the tower to halt all air traffic while crews searched for it on the ground. We didn't find any debris or any panels or any anything. Operations continue normally. 
Among other recent incidents, the engine of a United Boeing 737-900 caught fire after takeoff from Houston. Then, same city, different jet, United Boeing 737 MAX slid off a runway. And internationally, a United Boeing 777 left Sydney leaking hydraulic fluid. In all those cases, the planes landed safely. Kirby assured customers that the unrelated incidents did get the airline's attention, and United has sharpened its focus. It'll now expand training programs for pilots and mechanics, along with dedicating more resources to managing its supplier network. All moves designed to make flyers feel more comfortable about boarding United jets as the busy summer travel season nears. Now, Boeing has said it is working on several issues identified by the Federal Aviation Administration. However, there's been a new in-air issue just over the past 24 hours. An Alaska Airlines Boeing plane suffered a minor crack on its inner windshield during descent into Portland, Oregon. Now, no one was hurt. The FAA is investigating. All right, we started the morning with a little bit of snow on our lawns. Now we got a cloudy afternoon, but it's chilly out it there. It really is kind of raw outside <laughs> right now, and we're heading into uh, spring here in just a couple of days, Kim. Well, we didn't get our white Christmas, so why not have a white <laughs> spring? I mean, why not? We've got temps right now that are in the 30s, cold enough to where anything that falls is frozen. We have some light snow flurries, nothing to affect your evening commute, but definitely setting the scene for uh, the last full day of winter. 33 in Mount Clemens. It's 31 in Pontiac below freezing temps just about everywhere with the exception of Metro and in Ann Arbor and Monroe all checking in at 34. Lake Effect Snow Machine getting going over in Kalamazoo down to cold water and we've got just a few flurries here in Metro Detroit. Tomorrow we'll see more flurries. We start out at 29 degrees and we make it up to 45. It will not feel like it's 45 however because of the winds it will feel more like it's in the 30s. Then our highs only go into the 30s for Thursday and Friday. We'll talk about the chance for snow over the next several days and perhaps some measurable snow on uh -oh. Friday. I know. Mm. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's still Monday. But we'll talk about it. <laughs> All right, Kim.